thank you, Jason, and good evening, everyone. Well, this is a very special night for a very special brother. As president of the Penn Delta Alumni and Volunteer Corporation at the University of Pennsylvania, now the alumni of Penn Delta actually call it the Penn Delta Foundation, Brother Brett Danko is the epitome of what it looks like when a brother takes the oath of obligation to our fraternity seriously. Over the past 22 years, Brother Danko has poured his heart and soul into supporting Penn Delta's undergraduate brothers, volunteers, and vast alumni base. Some of those alumni brothers are here with him tonight. You see, Brett is a lot more than the ABC president. He's the catalyst for everything the alumni do for their chapter, whether it's making sure the chapter newsletter, the Delta Pen, gets out on time, to making sure that the chapter celebrates its historic milestones, to making sure that all graduating seniors attend the senior dinner that he hosts every year, and to reaching out to alumni when it's time to raise funds for chapter scholarships and home improvements. It's Brett Danko that makes sure that these things happen and not just some of the time, but rather all of the time. And on top of a busy non sigep life, he is married with children, you know. And we thank Dawn, Abby, and Nick for sharing their father with us. He also manages two separate businesses. All this, and he still found time to volunteer nationally as a presenter at Grand Chapter Conclaves and Life After College. And Brett's tireless work ethic for Penn Delta has paid off. The chapter GPA has exceeded 3.0 every year he's been the ABC president. The chapter scholarship funds are in the six figures. And Brett's fellow ABC volunteers note that it's Brett's commitment to Penn Delta that is the secret to the chapter's longevity. It is little wonder that Penn Delta holds the record as SIGEP's oldest continuously operating SIGEP chapter. Next month, the chapter will be 116 years old. Brett's active involvement in decisions about the operation and maintenance of their chapter home has provided countless undergraduates with a safe, comfortable living learning environment. He's managed fundraising campaigns for two major house renovations, and in the past year alone, he's worked with other volunteers and chapter leaders to purchase new furniture, kitchen appliances, and hire a new chef for the kitchen. Brett also believes in honoring the contributions of those brothers who came before him. Brett has led a number of projects that celebrate the chapter's history and achievements. He planned the chapter's 90th and 100th anniversary celebrations. And in 2005, he co-authored a book titled Brothers in War, 1943 to 1945, a book about how Penn Delta brothers that served in World War II stayed in contact with one another. This is my signed copy. Brett's love for Penn Delta continues to elevate the chapter and set an example for all brothers to follow. We are pleased to present the 2020 Exemplary Service Award to our brother from the Pennsylvania Delta chapter at the University of Pennsylvania, Brett Danko. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, I talked to Joe, and he suggested, I said, how long do I need to speak? So he said, hopefully you're comfortable two, two and a half hours. We're good? All right, so I, th I think we're going to go ahead and do that. No, I am, uh, I am humbled and, and very honored by this award. Uh, 
mostly because there's a, a lot of folks out there who have given of their time and of their talents that possibly deserve it more than I do. So I want to thank all the volunteers out there who every single week, every single month, every single year give of their time, taking away from their families, taking away from their jobs to give back to this great fraternity. Thank you. I also want to thank the National Fraternity staff, uh, uh, Grand President uh, uh, Chelke, the National Board members. I want to thank Penn Delta Brothers who, who showed up. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you, the graduate chapter. I also want to thank my, my, uh, my daughter, Abby, and my son, Nick, and especially my best friend and the best person that I've ever met in my life, uh, uh, Dawn Deer Lando, my wife. So thank you. And I think one of the most important things is the, the role of spouses uh, in our volunteerism. And there was one point in time, a little over about a decade ago, I was spending a lot of time at the chapter house. We were doing a lot of things with the undergraduates as well as alumni events. And magically, magically, I think it was Conrad Eberstein's doing. Magically, the undergraduates sent a large bouquet of flowers to my wife, just thanking her for allowing me to do what I was doing. And she was home with two young children at the time, and I think it bought me, what, another decade, right? So, <laughs> so I think that is a hint to all of the chapters out there, to your volunteers that, uh, are putting in a lot of time and have families, et cetera, every once in a while just acknowledge the spouses because they actually are the ones who are giving up and their family is giving up time with, with that volunteer so that they can spend it, spend it with you. My, uh, my journey with, with SIGAP, I, I wanted to, to touch on this. Um, I was essentially, I, ca I came from Pittsburgh. I was out of my element at the University of Pennsylvania and I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable, I didn't feel that I, I measured up, but I found one place, and I found SIGAP. I found a place where the cardinal principles of virtue, diligence, and brotherly love weren't just a tagline, it actually meant something. And I remember uh, you know, every day I would crank out you know, right around the corner and I'd look down Walnut Street and I would see the letters Sigma Phi Epsilon on the side of the house. And I would get goosebumps and I'd be all excited to get in there to see my friends and to see my brothers and the people that I knew cared about me. It's interesting, I, I now drive, I don't walk. I don't crank around the corner. I go slowly around the corner driving. And it's interesting, I do that and I still get goosebumps as I'm driving up Walnut Street and I see the letters on the side of the house. It still means something to me. To put it in today's uh, woke vernacular, it was my safe space, okay? So that's, uh, that's what it was for me. You know, SIGEP's founding fathers uh, said this fraternity will be different. And it has been. It's been at the forefront of change from inclusion policies, hazing policies, alcohol and drug education. And I believe most importantly, creating the leaders for the next generation. I think that is the one thing that you will learn from being leaders in your chapters. People say to me, well, you know, what does it matter if I'm dealing with things on the undergraduate? How is this going to help me later in life? Oh, it will definitely help you. Because five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you're gonna be in a work situation or a social situation and things are gonna come up. And you're gonna recall your days at Sigma Phi Epsilon as a leader and say, you know what, I dealt with this situation. I was herding the cats back then and I'm gonna herd them again today. And I'm gonna make a good decision and make sure, and make sure that whatever situation I'm in will come to a positive conclusion. I'm honored to have uh, Tim Games here, and I, I, when I found out you were coming, I decided to throw something in here. I, I joined SIGAP, I uh, graduated, I was an officer for, for all of my years there, 
lived in the chapter house, uh, moved away afterwards, but I still stayed involved through giving money uh, and any time I could come back for various events. Then I moved closer and I was asked to be on the executive board of the Pennsylvania Delta Foundation and Tim Games was the president. So a few years into that, I get a phone call from Brother Games explaining to me that I was the new president of the Pennsylvania Delta Foundation, to which I exclaimed, I didn't know I was running for president. And he said, well, you were not at the meeting, and I need for work issues to step down, so therefore, you are now the president. So what I have learned is any organization that I'm in, I do not miss board meetings. That is, that is what I've learned. That was 22 years ago, and I have been blessed with working with a, a wonderful group of volunteers. Uh, we have Brett, Brett Mervis here, uh, who really handles the physical plant issues uh, regarding the chapter house. Uh, Dan Olson, who could not be here from the class of, of 99, handles the communications. And really, we've worked together um, to, to you know, hopefully galvanize the alumni. We're honored with uh, some newer alums, uh, really getting that younger blood in. We have Jared Felton, uh, Honor Affilius uh, Award winner at the most recent conclave, and uh, a few more younger uh, alums that's, that, that have really reinvigorated um, us old folks, as I call it. You're not old, Mr. Mervis, but, but, but I am, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. Um, why does this leadership, we talk about why, why it matters, I, I want the undergraduates here to actually all stand, if you would. We've talked, we've had the volunteers stand, we've had award winners stand. Remember, look around folks, you are the future leaders, not only of this fraternity, but of this nation. So please, yeah, there's a little bit of pressure there. And yes, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. But I believe that that's what SIGAP teaches us. This organization, done right, is truly wonderful. And what it allows us to do is deal with situations now, as I've stated, that will help us later on in life. God, y'all can sit down now. I'm not going to make you stand the whole time. I've had a number of undergraduate presidents say to me, well, what, what traits are, are important in a leader? Um, and unfortunately, on the national stage, uh, we don't see a lot of that from either side of the aisle, nor do we see it in a, a lot of corporate CEOs, and that's a shame. But there are many, many great leaders out there who do it, and they do it the right way. So I would urge you, when you're working with your chapters, be humble. Try to keep perspective on what the goal is, what the end game is, and remember that it's the ultimate conclusion that matters, not necessarily you being right. I think one of the most important things is to understand that you can't do it by yourself. You need to ask for help. You need to ask for help from your alumni volunteers, the national fraternity, and from your fellow brothers. It's really important. Be true to yourself, be honest with folks, that really matters. Listen, I think that's the biggest thing. Listen to your fellow brothers. Listen to them, understand, have empathy, be kind to them. You will get much more done if they understand that you have been listening to them and you truly care about how they feel. I've been blessed, I've had, uh, I've, you know, with our alumni network over the years, I've gotten to know a great many people. Uh, one person who is my mentor who could not be here tonight, uh, Conrad Eberstein, who's, who's ill, uh, but he's, he's gonna be fine, but uh, he just wasn't able to make it here from, from Richmond. And he has been my, my friend, uh, my brother, he is the godfather to my daughter, Abby. So, uh, <laughs> And he's just been a wonderful, wonderful uh, mentor to me. And I would urge all of you, whenever you're dealing with different situations in your, in your chapter, to please reach out. You can reach out to the people who have founded your chapter, reached out to the alumni volunteers. If you don't have anyone, reach out to the National Fraternity. 
I think of all the times that, you know, Joe Langella and the various, uh, you know, district governors, et cetera, have been unbelievably, uh, unbelievable resources to me in trying to understand things. And Joe will, will be on the phone for a long time talking about things and he'll walk me through what's, what's going on. And it's absolutely wonderful. So even for somebody who's a, a alumni volunteer and who's running the actual AVC, I actually seek out his guidance and other people's guidance for that. So what I'd like to do is, um, you know, finish up by saying people ask me why I volunteer for, for SIG App, and it's simple. To create an environment where young men can grow, learn, and reach their potential in an environment of support and understanding. One of the things that I didn't understand when I was, a, I was an undergrad is, you know, alumni would come in and they were older than I was and I would say, well, I don't know that they really understand. It's different now. Let me be clear. It's not that different. Technology is different, sure. But people aren't different. Leadership isn't different. The fraternity isn't different. And what I've decided uh, uh, to do tonight was read something. Now, this was written by uh, a Penn Delta alum, uh, Bed Woolley, from the class of 16. Now, that's 1916 that this was written. What's interesting is that this was written almost 70 years ago. So as much as people say, well, things are, things are different now, this was written almost 70 years ago. So I just, just want you to think about that as you're, as you're listening. There's probably no separate period in a man's life which stands apart more distinctly in his memory or with happier recollection than the years he spent in college. Perhaps this is true because it is in this short time when having just outgrown his high school boyhood and being free of care and responsibility, he approaches eagerly and with open mind the avenues of new interest with which open before him. He is most susceptible to new thoughts and viewpoints. He views a wide circle of acquaintances in classroom and campus activities. He responds most readily to a feeling of common bond with his fellows in becoming a living part of his university. New and lasting friendships are made happily and easily, developing one of his finest senses, that of loyalty. He gives of his efforts in one field or another in a desire to further the greatness of his alma mater. He finds his new made, his, his new found, new made friends sharing this exuberance of youth, and it most naturally follows that he joins his fellows in fraternity and those closer ties of friendship which they choose to call brotherhood. That there are faults and weaknesses in certain activities of college fraternities, as they're all in all civ uh, social, civic, political, and religious groups, cannot be denied. That their critics are prone to emphasize the faults is equally true. Fair appraisal of fraternity value would acknowledge its contribution in the development of the highest ideals of loyalty and brotherhood, well beyond the scope of the faculty or classrooms of the ivy-clad walls of a great university. A man's active fraternity life being encompassed within the years of his college course allows him to make a short-range vision of his chapter as a continuous organization. His friendships are made with those of his chapter membership during that period and with the alumni members who visit the house during that time. Alumni meetings at the house contribute to his acquaintance with the chapter history in proportion to their frequency. In the natural course of events, the average graduate soon loses intimate contact with the chapter and with his university. With his attention becoming absorbed by his business or profession, his family, and new association, the place of his college fraternity and the claims upon his time and interests declines quickly. This normal progress, of course, leads away from the fraternal interest. An extreme few discard it completely. It is true, however, that for the vast majority, those to whom the fraternity has meant something, the interest does not die, but being dormant is readily and willfully revived. Now those, are written, those words were written almost 70 years ago. I think they hold true today. I would urge you, and this is my challenge to the undergraduates out there, Go back to your campuses. Create positive change for your chapter and your community. 
upon graduation, search for ways to give back. If it's giving back of money, it's fine. If it's giving back of time, mentorship, anything that you can do. Trust me, you will gain more from the experience than you can ever imagine. Our treasurer for our alumni board is named Andrew Hua from the class of 92. He lives in Hong Kong. I have tried to fire him numerous times. Not because he doesn't do his job well, it's because he lives where? In Hong Kong. So every time I speak with him, I will say, Andrew, are you sure you want to keep doing this? And he said, Brett, I live half a world away. This is my way of giving. Have I ever been late on sending a check or putting in a vote or anything like that? And I said, you never have. And he said, I never will. He is doing his part, even though he can't be in this country. So I just want to say thank you once again and best to all of you for the rest of your semester. Thank you.